This is a production of KMMedia.pro. Welcome back to Positive Talk Radio. Our goal is simple, to explore evolving ideas one conversation at a time. So come on over into our world. I know you'll like it, because on today's show... Today, we're going to talk about something that nobody ever really wants to talk about much, and that is how to be sober and serene in your life. We have a a young lady here by the name of Sam (laughs) Rufi. Sam, tell me your last name, please. (laughs) Rafus. Rafus. Okay. Sam Rafus, and she is a coach. She's an author, and uh, she actually does podcasts, I think, a little bit, too, and she does a lot of stuff, and uh, it'll be fun to have her here. Um, I just really like her message and what she has to say, and by the way, Nathan, how are you? Ah, uh, crying a little bit on the inside. Still can't get over Tuesday. Uh, if you're in Seattle, you know what happened. <laughs> yeah, Tuesday and, you know, Thursday, too. Well, Thursday wasn't so bad. It was easier to, you know, give into that one because that one felt more like, you know, we uh, definitely, it's hard to explain, but Tuesday, you know, we could have won that game. And then Thursday, it was more of an actual battle and we just couldn't win that one. Exactly. And Sam, just in case, if you're unaware, and there are people in our audience that may be unaware, we're talking about the Seattle Mariners who haven't been in the playoffs for 21 years, and we were hoping for better. See, uh, Nathan, the first game for me was like you go on a date with a girl, and things go very well in the beginning, and you're pretty well that sure that you're going to get to have a relationship with this individual. And so you go on a second date, you end up picking her up at her house, and her boyfriend answers the door oh. at the end. You, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like you're hoping for the best, and then all of a sudden, everything falls apart. <laughs> I would think of that maybe as in the first date. You know, everything's going well and says, yeah, sorry, I don't want to see you again. <laughs> have you been to my house no i'm kidding um in any event sam it's welcome welcome to the show it's nice to have you here thank you so much kevin and where are you by the way where physically are you located i am in calgary alberta beautiful area from what i understand it's gorgeous Oh, very nice. And you are a coach. You've been uh, working in in this industry for a while. Uh, but something happened a couple of years ago that uh, kind of changed everything for you a little bit, didn't it? It did, Kevin. So kindly go into that and explain what in the heck happened. <laughs> and I always say, and, and I can laugh about it now. And when we're talking about addiction and recovery, it is a serious subject. It's, it's not fun for anyone that is going through it. However, for me, being on the other side of it, and you're, and you're never fully recovered. Like you're always like all of us in that are, have stopped an, an addiction where all like for me, it was wine. I was addicted to wine. And when I really came to that realization, stopping was not easy. So that's why, you know, I've switched my business and brand to make it about sober and serene. So let's, let's take it back, Kevin. So for many, many years, I've, well, I've been in the helping professions for many years. I was a social worker. And then once I had my kids, I wanted to stay home and create my life around the girls schedule. So I, you know, taught parenting classes, I taught nutrition classes, I went back to school to become a holistic nutritionist. That was really my passion was all about how I can be holistically healthy, raise my children healthy, be all of the healthy Uh, body, mind, spirit. So that was my goal was to be that individual and to help others in the way that I could. So for many years, I helped uh, women mostly. I, I do have a few male clients, but mostly women. Let's just say I helped women either, you know, lose weight, um, any, anything that when it came to their health and that's the type of person I was. And in between it, you know, I, I drank a little bit, But when I was raising the girls, there was really not that much time to spend a lot of time drinking. And now that I look back on it, 
I realized that it was probably the divorce when the girl's dad and I split up. I, I can look back on it now and see where, you know, more drinking crept up on me. So now that I'm looking at it clearly, however, the trigger for me and, and why I'm so passionate about talking about it is because women, if you are like me and you are healthy and you are um, looking after your diet, you're being a, a great mom, you are trying to look after other people in your life, you eat healthy, you exercise. Kevin, I, I walked every day, I hiked every day, I, I you know, did yoga, meditation, uh, prayer, all of what I call the healthy um, things that we do in our life. However, behind the scenes, I had crept up to this addiction of basically having a bottle of wine by myself behind closed doors at the end of the day. And when I, when I really came to that realization about, Hey, you know what? I'm drinking a lot of wine here. I would justify it because I'm healthy and because I'm functioning. Now I, I was not the person that, you know, something um, terrible had to happen. I didn't drink and drive. I didn't have anything terrible that happened that so-called made me hit my rock bottom. Now, did you ever say why you were drinking that bottle of wine going, boy, they're not putting as much wine in here as they're used to. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because sometimes, sometimes I'd be on my way home um, and I would think to myself, how much wine do I have? And this is what happens. And anyone who is watching or listening, if you are dealing with what I call the either the monkey mind or the alcohol mind, you know what I'm talking about. Because what we do that's different than, quote, a normal drinker, drinker, like somebody that can have a glass of wine with dinner and then not think about alcohol for the rest of the week. Someone like me that has a drink, either at lunchtime, at wine o'clock, at dinner, it turns a switch where all of a sudden I'm thinking, where is the next drink? Where is the next drink? And if there's a bottle of wine open, like I've been at events where, you know, put the cork on it and put it away. Someone like me, we're like, what? You just finish the bottle. You don't, you don't put it away. But then it just does get to be more. And that's what it got to be for me, Kevin. So what time is wine o'clock? Uh, for me, originally, it was five o'clock. Then it would be four o'clock. Then it would be three o'clock. And we're talking the, the, the trigger for me, 2020. So we know what happened. We know we we're shut down. And I, I was actually at my daughter. She had just had my grandson. And, you know, it got to be while I was staying there, it got to be, oh, I'll have a drink at five o'clock. But, oh, wait, today, you know, we're just staying at home. It'll be four o'clock and and laughingly. And it wasn't funny because you start at three o'clock. Kevin, lots of times I had time for a bottle, a bottle and a half, sometimes two. And sometimes I'd go get a box of wine and oh, my goodness, it does not taste as good as the bottled wine. But you can fool yourself into drinking as much as you want, because from the box, nobody's going to look at how much you, how much you drink. So the, the games that we play with ourselves. Well, from everything that I've read is that uh, if you are a long-term drinker, it changes your brain chemistry Yeah, and changes everything about you because you end up going from, and, and you mentioned it, you went from bottle to bottle and always were prepared and you always looked ahead to make sure that if you needed to stop at a convenience store on the way home because you only had a third of a bottle from yeah. the other night, you would do that to prepare yourself so that you could have enough so you wouldn't have to start drinking and then go buy some more because um, yeah. you were being responsible about it. Yeah. And and it, it it for me personally, it consumed me like my. Even even though you know I've I've got my my coaching consulting business, however, it did take a back seat during COVID because everything changed. But you're me as a person that was addicted to wine. My life revolved around those decisions. So it would be okay. What am I doing today? Okay, well, you know, if I'm going to be looking after Carson, then okay, then I cannot drink while I'm looking after my grandson. And I wouldn't like those things. I would, I would compute all those things. And, and that's what made it so hard to quit is because I was that quote functioning person 
had just drank a lot of wine. Well, and did you find that in the course of time that it became kind of a reward for you? I've done a really good job today, and and I've had some really good clients and stuff like that. I'm just going to relax, watch a little TV, and have a glass of wine. Okay, maybe two. Okay, maybe a bottle. And and that's how it would go. Yep. And you always start out with one glass. The thought is always, and when you say celebrate, and for me, I used wine to celebrate. I used wine to cope. I used wine to drown my sorrows. I used wine for everything. I, I'm looking back now with the clear head and I am two years, three months, X number. I think I'm 836 days, whatever the date from July 1st of 2020 till now. So congratulations, have, by the thank way. Thank you. And it wasn't easy. It is not easy. And no, I didn't plan July 1st. That just happened to be the date where I just said enough. I need to, I need to stop. But you do like for me, I planned before that I planned everything around it. I would plan around, you know, if I was going to go out, then how much I could drink. If I was going to drive, oh, then I'm not going to drink. But when I got home, then I could drink more. If I'm going to be with my kids, oh, well, I don't want to drink too much because I still want to be present. So it's like this, 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 the alcohol takes over. And now I can gratefully and thankfully say that I rarely, rarely think of alcohol right now. And if I do, all it is, it's a, for me, it's a quick switch now where I am not about to give up my life and my everything that I've gained for that glass of wine, because I know enough now with a clear brain, I know where the slippery slope will take me. So how did it change you when you stopped and how did you recognize that it was so important for you and what, what is your life like now versus what it was like then? (laughs) I like to, I like to say that, well, Carson is my two and a half year old grandson. And I have to be careful because I might start to cry because I, I adore him. And that, like, if you talk to anyone who, who quits drinking or quits a substance or really decides, there always is a deciding moment. Like there is something that switches. And, and we talk about the, the, uh, the thousand day ones. The thousand times that even that we, you know, you've drank and you have a hangover and you think, oh, I'm not going to drink anymore. And a couple of days goes by and then you're feeling great and then you crave it again. So you give in. And so there's, I always say the thousand day ones. I went through a thousand day ones. However, after my daughter had Carson, I, I just, I, I remember a crystal clear moment of holding this beautiful little baby And I just looked down at him and I just had the thought, I had the thought, what is my relationship? Do I want with this beautiful little boy? Do I want him to like run around with Nana? That's what he calls me, Nana. And I love it. And there's those of you that are grandparents, you get it. There's nothing better than your grandchild calling you. And I just looked down and I thought, do I want him to be remembering the good times with Nana and running around and playing and doing whatever it is, me being able to pick him up anytime and not worry if I've been drinking. So this thought, but I'm looking down at him and I'm because he's sleeping in my arms and he's so peaceful and beautiful, this gorgeous little baby. And I just thought, do I want to be the Nana that has the wine glass and half drunk all the time of his life? Or do I want to just be the Nana that's clear and present and having fun with him? And just something switched in my brain. Something was just like, you have to do everything you can to be that person for him. So I know you can only quit for yourself. Like, absolutely. Like, you can't just decide to quit for someone. But it was the, I would say, the second deciding factor. It was the deciding factor. I knew I had to stop the amount of wine I was drinking. It would really, as, as healthy as I was, it was still taking its toll on me. So it, that was just, that was just, again, the, the factor. <laughs> so in one of these uh, thousand times that you, you were going to do this, did you say to yourself, well, you know what? I'm just going to have one. That's all I'm going to have. And and then I'm going to become, you know, really one is enough and I'll be fine. 
But it never happens that way, does it? Never. And and yes, some people can do that. And that's the difference. And I don't like labels. I don't like labeling myself as an alcoholic. I I like to just say I had an addiction to wine that I don't have anymore. And anyone that can relate to that, you you know what what type of drinker you are. And I am not here to preach to anyone. I am not here to tell anybody that they're drinking too much or they're not. Because, Kevin, if you would have asked me um, even three years ago, even three years ago, if you would have said to me, you know what, Sam, you know, in three years, you're going to be on positive talk radio and you're going to be talking about you have been alcohol free for, you know, two just over two years. I would have said you are crazy because I was so in love with wine. I was so in love with the, the, the lifestyle of, of me being such a healthy person, yet I got to reward myself with wine. So you, you, you just, you don't know where your life is going to take you. And I just say to people, like, um, I had a woman say to me a couple of weeks ago, do you think I'm drinking too much? And I, I, it just kind of came out of the blue and I'm like, I don't even know how much you drink. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I think. It, it's really like what what's going on with you? What what is it that you want? And I can't make that decision for anyone. And some people looked at me and said, oh, you don't drink that much. You know, you're fine. But it's still an internal it, it's an internal um, decision. And I'm, I'm just here if people want to talk. That's all I say to people. If you if you want to talk and with somebody that understands you know, that's what I'm here for. So if somebody comes to you and says, um, do you think I'm drinking too much? Doesn't that generally mean they probably are? Well, usually, usually if it, if you're, I mean, I asked myself that question hundreds of times over the years, Kevin, because yeah, like certainly I didn't drink when I was pregnant with my daughters, but after I had my kids every time, the first thing I remember thinking about is, oh, wow, I can have a drink now. And then, you know, you go on a binge and for me. Yeah. So yeah. I have probably had a, more of an alcohol problem my whole life than I, even I was willing to admit. And now I'm just now I just willingly talk about it openly. But it took me and even, you know, the first year I I wouldn't hide it but I wouldn't willingly talk about it either because there's a lot of shame that's carried with seeming to think that you have this outside persona, especially in the health and wellness industry. You know, I'm trying to keep people healthy yet. I have this quote, dirty little secret where I go home and drink a bottle of wine. Now, did you, while you, right after you quit, did you not want to tell anybody just in case you had a relapse and decided yeah. to go buy a bottle of wine. And, yeah. and so it's, if, if once you told everybody, then you kind of felt honor bound to, to live up to it. Whereas if it was a, your naughty little secret that you had, yeah. you could, you could then uh, go back and, uh, and resume your previous lifestyle. And the reason I bring that up is that, that I think that in our society, um, that happens a whole lot more than people are willing to admit. And uh, um, I, I distinctly remember I was in a, uh, um, I worked in a, um, um, a factory of a woodworking factory and all the guys were there and they had, they had a ritual that they played hearts at lunch. They all went to work. And then every Thursday night they went out and got bombed. And then, and then they would come to work hungover on Friday, and then they would go back on Saturday and get bombed again to get rid of the hangover they got from the previous night, and it became a weekly ritual. Um, and that's, I think that happens to a lot of people. It sounds like my ritual in my late 20s, before I had kids, it sounds like I, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I can remember those days. Yes, and and but and like I say again, congratulations. Now you did this without this twelve step program. You did this without going into rehab per se. Uh, was it just a white knuckle thing? Um, you could say a little bit at the beginning, and and you, the white knuckle for me was 
say the period between uh, Carson was born in March and then the, the final was July. And, and I had some white knuckle times before that where I think, oh, I'm going to quit for two weeks. And it was just white knuckle. All, all I'd be doing every day is like, oh, I just got to get through today. And then I think, oh, I can drink in a week or two weeks. So I had many of those times. This time between March and July, like I remember, recall doing uh, 38 days. I remember that was a marker. And then having that thought of, oh, I can just have one glass. And, and this, this whole time period of that time period of 2020 was when I didn't tell anyone, where I just kind of kept it to me. And I remember mentioning it to Abby Carson's, dad, uh, Carson's mom. And I remember offhandedly saying to her, because I'm staying with her, oh, Abby, I'm not going to drink this week. And she just kind of laughed. And she just kind of went, oh, okay, you know, and I know she didn't believe me because here's mom having a glass of wine every day at three o'clock, four o'clock. And part of me was like, well, I'm going to show them I'm really going to do this. And you really have to do it for yourself. Like there, I can only say there's a difference between me thinking I'm going to show somebody else that I'm going to do this. So between that time period, there was a lot of white knuckling it really. But once that switch of that July 1st and Kevin, it was it was due to the most horrendous hangover in that whole year. Like literally, I drank so much that night before on an empty stomach. You know, it's the old what were you thinking? Like, uh-huh. really, what were you thinking? And mm-hmm. I just remember waking up that morning and I opened my eyes and I the first thought was enough like when is this like when are you when is this going to be enough? and that day it was just enough so I think I white knuckled it probably for about a week but then I was like you know what you got to figure out some strategies here like I, and this is talking to myself I do a lot of internal dialogue and I was just like you know what you need to figure this out because the option is you're not drinking and I didn't say forever I never said at the beginning, I literally just said to myself, um, and I like, yeah, I didn't do the 12 steps. I didn't go to AA. I just, I really felt, I, I do a lot of meditation and prayer anyway, Kevin. So I really thought, you know what, I need to just go within and take care of this. And I wasn't against seeking outside help. I just really wanted to get clear in my own mind and body what I was doing here. And I just committed to myself and so probably at least the first 30 days I I think there was maybe one other person that knew that I that I wasn't drinking but I by that by that point that week or that month that first month I was pretty solid I was like there was nothing that was I was like I need to do this and then I joke around and, and if you if you're on my website and you see different pictures of me walking or outside or whatever, I love being outside. We have a lot of sun in Calgary and and I love getting out on the paths and and uh, walking. So I just joked around with myself. OK, every time you want wine, you need to walk. So change wine o'clock for walk o'clock because you need to do for me. I needed to do something different. If I tried to think about not drinking, I thought about drinking. Well, of course, that's, that's 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 the way it works. And it's like when you uh, finish 38 days, it's like, woohoo, I did 38 days. I'm going to celebrate and have a glass of wine or five. Sure. Or six. That's what like, I did. That's It was like, oh, I and you fool yourself. And those of you that are understanding what I'm saying, I'm saying the other ones of us with this type of brain on alcohol, you'll get it. When I say, you say to yourself, Oh, you know what? I've taken a break for 38 days. I've got this figured out. I can moderate. I can have one glass. You really think you can. But as soon as you do, and as soon as you have that one glass, you don't have the same brain. Your brain is different as soon as you, and for me, as soon as I had wine and Kevin, it's, it, it is bizarre because people will say to me, oh, well, what about other alcohol? No. You could, you could have, you could have a bottle of tequila. You could have a uh, bottle of, of whiskey, whatever. I probably still wouldn't have drank for 39 days, 40 days. Like it still, it didn't have the same uh, appeal, I guess. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, if there was no wine around, 
I would just go buy wine. If I wanted one, I would just go buy wine. So, well, that was your drug of choice. And yeah. it was also more socially acceptable because a lot For of sure. people will say, Oh, a glass of wine. That's not a big deal. Yeah. But if you put a bunch of glasses of wine together, it becomes the same thing because it's uh, a glass of wine still has the same alcohol content as a beer or a shot of whiskey yeah. or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. It's all got it's all got the same, you know, and, and I, I'd like to think. And by the way, you are not what I would call a clinical uh, alcoholic like my brother was an alcoholic and he he had what I would uh, pleasantly describe as he didn't have a stop switch. Yeah. So it was like, if you've ever heard the, uh, uh, the expression, what is it? I'm, I'm fine. I drink and I fall down and, or something. I, I can't remember what it is, but it's, it's like, so he would literally drink himself until he passed out. Yeah. And then he would get up and he'd have a hangover. And this is what he'd always say. Yeah, I got a bit of a hangover today. So I cracked a beer at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then that proceeded to be and then a whole nother day, a whole nother case of beer, a whole nother thing that he did to that. On the, and it became a thing that he did it all the time. And uh, it really negatively affected his life and the people around him. And, and yeah. it made it very difficult for him. And it got to the point where he was he was he was a roofer. And if you can imagine drinking beer while you're roofing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Losing your balance. Oh, that makes absolutely. And while he did fall off a roof, he fell 25 feet uh, oh one time and um, and broke a bunch of stuff. So but he never mentioned whether or not he had actually been drinking on the on the job or not. But in any event, um, so it's not that. But a lot of people have what you had, which is a social drinker gone awry, kind of. Yeah. And the, the, what the, what the and you've heard of the DSM, the Diagnostic Manual of, of uh, in indicating um, um, mental and physical issues. And I might have it wrong. Those of you that know what I'm talking about, but it's it's the term now. It's not necessarily labeled. You're an alcoholic. It's alcohol use disorder. And they ask you a set of questions and it starts out with, you know, in the past year, have you, and then it's things like, you know, uh, drank more than two drinks consecutively, or have you uh, felt like you're drinking too much? And it goes through this set of questions. And I remember going through this set of questions, Kevin, and, and I remember at one point in, in a doctor checkup and I rarely saw my doctor because, you know, I, I only go every few years to get a checkup um, because I'm healthy and, and don't have any underlying conditions. But I remember at one point him asking me these questions and him saying, um, I know I probably don't really have to ask you these, but because it's on the, you know, whatever checkup, say when I was how old, you know, he's got to check it for whatever age I was. So I remember him, I remember him asking me, and what do you think I did? You lied. Of course, (laughs) of course I lied, you know, because it talks about how how many numbers and, 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 uh, and, and the shame of, you know, not wanting to admit how much I'm drinking. So of course I lie. And then Kevin, the kicker is when I go back for the results of my whole physical my whole physical and including lab work, blood work, everything I'd answered. My doctor says, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because (laughs) I had the numbers of a 45 year old woman, Kevin, at the time, I think I was, I was in my fifties. So in my mind, I'm thinking, woohoo, you know, everything I'm doing is working. I am healthy, you know? So at this point in my life, I'm thinking, oh, see, you know, so as much wine as I drink, I'm okay. Again, all of this justifying behavior. Of course, of course. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with Sam. Say your last name for me so I don't screw it up. Ray Foss. Ray Foss. And uh, she's got the uh, website. She's also got a practice. It's called Sober and Serene. You can go look at her website. It's a beautiful site, by the way. Thank uh, you. Soberandserene.com. Uh, we need to take a break, and uh, but when we come back, uh, but actually before we go to break, uh, Nathan, would you like to give out the numbers if somebody would like to talk to Sam about maybe, I know, you have a friend, 
and this friend uh, might need some help, and you don't have to out yourself, but if you would like to talk to her about about something that you feel the need to change, uh, she is the person to help you. So, Nathan, what are the numbers? Our phone numbers are 425-373-5527 or toll-free at 888-298-5569. And since this is such an important issue, I'm going to give those out again. So our phone numbers are 425-373-5527 or toll-free at 888-298-5569. And don't be shy. It's okay. You don't have to give us your right name. You can tell us it's your friend. But I think that it would behoove you to get some guidance if if you're feeling called to do that. If you're still hungover from the game last night, uh, which ended at like four o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> and uh, and you, you might want to give Sam a call. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. You're listening to Positive Talk Radio. These days, it's difficult to be able to do it all, especially as a small business owner. Marketing your business can be really tough, especially developing a presence on social media, creating commercial content, and media production. That's where KMmedia.pro can help. You see, in addition to creating a great podcast called Positive Talk Radio, we also have a radio show, video, audio production, content creation, including commercials, video shorts and trailers, voiceovers, social media development, and so much more. It only makes sense to hire a pro to get your business notice. That's what we do. Please visit kmmedia.pro for more information and to schedule a consultation to take your business stream to the next level. That's kmmedia.pro. Yes, we can. When you want to say more than words communicate, You can with flowers. Your custom boutique floral studio in Bothell, Washington is anaturaldesign.com. Connecting you to nature through the language of flowers. Where your people are is where our flowers are beautiful. Your success is our goal. Now through New Year's Eve, here's your exclusive bonus for being our appreciated listener. Type in promo code POSITIVETALKRADIO at checkout to receive $20 off your order. Our gift to you for being here with us today. anaturaldesign.com Hey there, I'm excited that you're listening right now. And if you like what we're doing here, you're going to love PositiveTalkRadio.net. On PositiveTalkRadio.net, each show, which is recorded live, is packed with positive information with real people discussing real issues and positive solutions that can work for everyone. I hope that you'll join us on PositiveTalkRadio.net and listen to all 340 plus shows. I think it's worth your time. But then, that's just me. That's PositiveTalkRadio.net, your home for great progressive positive podcasts. And welcome back, everybody, to Positive Talk Radio. My name is Kevin McDonald. I get to be your host here. And uh, we have a wonderful guest today. And uh, I implore you to give us a call if you would like to talk to Sam. She is a, a sober and serene coach. She helps you find your 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 peace in life and it makes it a lot easier when you don't have all these things nagging at you and these addictions and stuff that that cause a great deal of problems so she's been through the war herself and has come out the other side congratulations again by the way and uh, and if you want to go to her website again it's sober and serene.com and um i gotta ask you sam When you decided that you were going to do this and change your practice, that must have been, there must have been a lot of people in your world that said sober and serene, but you've, you've never been a drunk. You've never been, you know, somebody that falls down and stuff like that. So, so what's, what's changed? Yeah, you, you could say that. And Kevin, I always say, Every, everything, everything for me comes through a conversation with God, universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it. And, and I always talk about the voices in my head. So, you know, I'm, I've after meditation or whatever. And in all honesty, when I came back to my business, um, cause I had taken a break actually before COVID and, and 
that's a story for another day, but I had taken a break. And then because Abby was having Carson, I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend some time with her. And then I'm going to come to my business back to my business, which is called love brand you. So I do have another brand love brand you, which is uh, what I was doing, you know, helping women either build their business or become healthier, what, whatever they needed help with. So I was trying to mold when, once I quit drinking and, and I keep laughing within myself and I'd have these conversations with God and I'd say, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make the sobriety piece a little, a little bit of the coaching, you know, I'm going to maybe put a line in, you know, under health and wellness coaching, kind of like an addendum. Oh, and, and health and wellness, I'm going to do um, sobriety. So this is what I was trying to tell myself and nothing was working. Nothing like nothing was coming together. Things weren't. And, and after one meditation, it was, it was this little, um, I always say these little conversations between me and my higher self. And it was, it's literally really, you're really just going to try and do this sober thing under love brand you. And, it, and it's almost like the two sides on, or, and you could call it the, the angel and the devil, whatever you want to call it. And it's like, really, you know, that's not what you're going to do. So I remember saying, well, what is it that I'm supposed to do then? And Kevin, with within a flash, it was like sober and serene. And I was like, what? And then I went, oh, okay. So I really do have to really create a different brand. Like now that I'm deciding to do this and it was a loud and clear, yes, you do. And I did go through a little bit of, well, what will people think? Mm -hmm. Am I really like, am I really going to claim this? Am I really going to own this? Because I love love brand you too. Like I was really connected and heartfelt connected with that brand and it, but it just kept coming back to, and this was at the beginning of the year. And so I made a deal with God and basically said, okay, if I hit two years, which was, would have been July 1st. And, and before that I had never, I had never said forever. Because again, anybody that's going through with recovery, the scariest thing that we can tell ourselves is what I'm never going to drink again. Like if we can't let go of that, whatever it is that we're addicted to. So we have to do it in little steps to, to, to get through it. Yep. So when I decided and start putting it out there and then started talking to people like my closest coach colleagues. And I, I have this accountability group that we, we, we actually get together and we support each other. And I said to them, you guys, I'm thinking of this. And of course, what am I thinking? They're going to be nothing but supportive. They're going to be nothing but, hey, that's a great idea. And then the more that I did talk about it, more people were saying, like, I had no idea. I had like, I never would have, I never would have thought you for that my best friends of 30 years that, you know, normally we get together and have a few drinks. And when I was staying away from them and saying, you guys, I'm not ready to be in a, in a, a, a social situation drinking. I am pretty strong, but I just don't want to be around it. They were nothing but supportive they, we would meet up and go for a walk or we'd meet up and go for a coffee. So most of what I went through was mostly my internal struggle. But once I decided this is the road I'm going and I've decided of doing that. So since January of, or July of this year and just said, okay, I'm doing this. It really has been the most positive experience. Well, you know, um, over the course of time, there are so many domains out there now that have been purchased and stuff. I always have in, I have an inner voice as well. And my inner voice will tell me, and I will go to look for a domain. And if the domain is available, the name that, that I've chosen, if the no domain is available, then I know that I'm on the right path because that was reserved for me from the other side. Like so, so 100%, so Kevin. Yes. And so when you went and, and said, well, you know, that somebody has to have picked that somewhere yeah. along the way. And and then you went and searched for it and the dot com was available. It was like, okay, I guess that's it. I guess yeah. I'm I've been I've been told what I should do. Yeah. 
And there is a Facebook group. There's a meditation group that is, and, and I think we've connected on Instagram from, from the, the man that runs that group. And so, yes, the, the, the domain is sober and serene, but anywhere on different social media channels that there was a couple that had sober and serene already, then I just, I just tweaked it to, I am sober and serene. Right. But right. I'm with you. If I go and I can find the domain, and it was the same when I had figured out Love Brand U years ago. It was if the domain, the dot com. And I was, and I'm in Canada. Yes, dot CAs are good. But if you, to build a brand, my personal belief is you need the dot com. You really do for if you're going to be a multinational. Yeah. Because we don't have dot CA here. It's not really recognized in, yeah. in the States like yeah. a dot com is. Yeah. Uh, and, and right now, I would say more of my clients are in the U.S. than in Canada. And it, and it goes in waves. I, I have clients all over the world, but um, for the most part, it seems at this point in time, my clients are in the U.S. That's because we got a bit of a problem down here. I don't know if you noticed. But uh, <laughs> if, if, you, if, you, if you go to any particular grocery store, you will find uh, rows upon rows of beer, wine, spirits, and all of that stuff. And it's because we have, I think that uh, if truth be known, we have a lot of, you know, like closet drinkers that, that they don't necessarily want everybody to know uh, the extent of what they're doing, but they're doing more than they should do and uh it's a it's a crutch to to get us through life and and that's that's why going to someone like you or going to you would be helpful for someone because you can help them find a different way uh would that be that's all i tried that's 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 my that's my intent and i i've talked to some women recently because i say you know stop drinking get healthy take control of your life well, some people aren't ready right away to stop drinking, but they're ready to stop over drinking. Mm. And then with some of my clients, overeating comes with it. And that's why I still like, you know, help people with uh, with eating or digestive issues or or weight loss. It's like I. I just hear from people. Sorry, I'm stumbling for words, meaning that I just say to people, just have a conversation with me. I'm not here to just say you need to stop drinking and you it's let's talk about what's going on in your life, because what I'm finding is most of the women that are coming to me and talking with me right now um, or men, I've, it's they're either over drinking, overeating, or I see a lot of uh, people in this area right now struggling with imposter syndrome struggling <laughs> well i'm not good enough like i'm i'm a health coach but look at that health coach over there they're doing this i should be doing this and so the confidence is wavering and when you have when you have either an addiction and it could be an addiction to food it could be addiction to alcohol it could be addiction to um to work there's women that are overworking themselves or uh, lack of sleep. They're, like they're, all of the health issues are, are what I like to you know discuss with people because the issues over here, whether it be your addiction to wine, I get the imposter syndrome. I get it because when I would be hung over and then I'd be going to teach a class or I'd be going to lead a group or speak and I'd be hung over, Kevin. But I have to pretend that I'm on my game. And those are the times when imposter sy syndrome would hit because I'd be like, wow, like who am I to stand up here and tell people how to be healthy and I'm hung over? Exactly. It's, it's like every time I do this show on Fridays, I have imposter syndrome because I keep wanting to be as good as Nathan is. And so it makes it really difficult for, for me because Nathan is so good at what he does. I'm not even sure he's listening right now. That's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> <man. No. laughs> he's not going to get on and talk about it. But anyway, so, uh, um, but I know well, we I do. Get we compare ourselves to to other people that we that we like in our industry or other women or uh yeah like it, it's prevalent in the health and wellness uh, health and wellness spirituality field like that the the arena that i am in it is very prevalent 
for men and women in this. And, and I don't know other areas. I, I know my, I know my world, I know my sandbox and it's prevalent that there is a lot of uh, imposter syndrome. It is everywhere. Uh, we are, we are taught that from, from, um, from youth, from being babies that, that we're not necessarily as good as somebody else is. Um, so we're always comparing ourselves and, and in a lot of cases, we're not comparing ourselves favorably to somebody else because we don't get to see what struggles they're having in their life. We just see the perfect outside that they are presenting. As an example, I will never be six foot eight. And that's why I'm so unhappy that Nathan is six foot eight. No, I'm kidding. Um, because it's, you know, but that's, that's how we are, is we all want something other than who we are or what we are. And we don't stop to think about how special each one of us is. And I think for me, that's the gift that truly becoming sober, like with no substances, like no, nothing to cloud me, I had to go through and really face um, anything. And like you, it, it's the term, you have to do the inner work. Yes. But you really, when, when you're going through recovery, you're trying to be sober, uh, you, you really have to take a look at yourself. And I, I'm happy to say that doing that inner work and really, you know, uh, looking at those limiting beliefs and, and getting my own coaching, I, I fully believe in even a coach needs a coach. I've had a lot of help along the way. And even just having some of my colleagues in, like I say, in our accountability group to even um, just talk about things just talk about things and have somebody clearly listen and yet still call you on some of your stuff. Like you, you still need somebody as much as we like to be great coaches. You, there has to be somebody that still challenges you. And that's what I needed to, to get through some of my own uh, issues, uh, get through some of my own trauma, um, really take a look at probably what caused what the root cause was for more of my wine consumption. And it really does come back to how we feel about ourselves. It truly is about that self-love. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, there's only one guy that I'm aware of. Maybe you know something different, but there's only one guy that I'm aware of that ever walked on water. And so, or, or turned, or turned water into wine, uh, which, which in your world would have been a really cool thing to be able to do. huh? <laughs> It would have been awesome, Kevin. <laughs> and, uh, but in our society, that is a, it's a big, great, great big crutch. And a lot of people, that's, that's why there are so many bars that are doing well and stuff like that. So, you know, we all could look at doing life a little bit differently. And by the way, I was going to, I was going to mention that you're, you're a health coach and you help people lose weight. Do you, have you ever said to somebody, well, you know what? If you stop drinking two bottles of wine a day, guess what you're going to do? You're going to lose weight all by yourself. Oh, and, and yes. And I would say I'm a little bit gentler. But <laughs> <laughs> I can, oh, come I can, on, be tough. I can be tough with myself, but because I, I understand, I understand the struggle, not only of weight loss. I have a, I have a weight loss story that, you know, that plagued me before I had my kids. And so I, I know the struggles of not only struggling to lose weight, of struggling to um, overcome an addiction, struggling to overcome comparison and imposter syndrome. And Kevin, I am, I am by no means on my game a hundred percent every day. Like there's still but I know what I need to do to keep myself feeling good, to keep myself in a good headspace. It, it's, it's, uh, do you remember Zig Ziglar? Oh yeah. Like remember when Zig Ziglar would talk about, and I'm aging myself, but I have to mention Zig Ziglar because my dad loved him. My mom loved him. We listened to the cassette tapes when I was a kid, I've got all his books, but he would talk about, okay, so we shower every day. We brush our teeth every day. Why are we not doing our self-care every day? Meaning, why are we not doing the prayers and the meditation and the positive talk? The most important human being in our life is us. You have to nurture that self-care. And I have a self-care routine 
every single day, whether I do it for five minutes or 20 minutes based on my, my time. But if you are not doing the things that you need to do to take care of yourself, this is when we really go down that, that slope and start doubting ourselves. So there has to be uh, the positive, whether it's positive talk, which is what, like, I love the name of the show, positive, like you, you have to focus on some of those. You can't, it doesn't happen by accident. Anyway, Zig said it way more elegant, elegantly than I'm saying it, but I just remember Zig Ziglar saying things like that. It is in my world. It's imperative. <laughs> you know, I, can I tell you a quick story? Real Absolutely. Quick? Um, my oldest son, he is, uh, because I've always been the way I am, and I am, if you and I were to go sit down and sit down and have a cocktail, or no, we wouldn't do that, but if we were to have a cup of coffee or, or, or a, uh, some tea or something, this is who I am. I am the same way in person as I am when I do the radio show and all that. So Me I'm, too. I'm just a natural positive person. My son is just a natural negative person, probably <laughs> because I'm a natural positive person. And so, you know, last year he was complaining because he was living in a house he didn't like. He was in a one-bedroom apartment. He didn't have a girlfriend. He didn't uh, have a job he liked. So he hated everything. And I said, you know, it's all going to change for you. But I want you to be grateful for what you've got and grateful for who you are. And it's all going to change for you. And he said, sure, Dad, sure, sure. Just because you're doing positive talk radio doesn't mean that you know anything. And I said, okay, well, fine. I agree with that. And uh, so um, fast forward a year, he's changed jobs. He's got a job he, he loves and they love him. He's now bought a house. He's living in a house and he's got a girlfriend. So everything that he was complaining about a year ago has all changed for him. And, uh, and it's because of changing your mindset. You can be positive. And um, so now when I tell him all of that, he says, shut up. So yeah. you know, <laughs> Our, our kids, I mean, we, we love each other and our kids are wonderful, but they don't, they don't want to listen to mom and dad. Nope. 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 They don't. They don't. So by the way, we are talking with Sam and your last name is Ray Foss. Ray Foss. I knew that Sam Ray Foss and go to sober and serene.com and go talk to her. You can, uh, um, She's got a services page. She's got a free discovery call. You can you can talk to her and see if if you mesh. You know, not all coaches mesh with everybody and stuff. That's why there are a lot of them, and that's why they're needed. Uh, but if it, if you're called to do it, just go do it, and uh, and you'll have fun doing it. Now, what I want to do for a moment is I'm going to set myself over here on on, on the side, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to tell our audience, the ones that are listening now as they're having lunch throughout Seattle all over the place, and the ones that will be listening to this as it turns into a podcast, which will be on positivetalk.net and stuff. I want you to tell them anything that you would like them to know. Well, I, th I think if you're talking about the subject of addiction and I, I know, I know wine addiction, that's what I tell everyone. Like I know wine addiction, I know food addiction. You know, if, if people really want to dive deep on that, um, I can have that conversation with them. If they want a, co a conversation about any, you know, say they're have a drug addiction, I, I absolutely, you know, talk to, I always say, let's start with a conversation. I am not, I, I pride myself on being the coach that let's start with the conversation. I'm not here to sell you. I'm here to really listen to what it is you need, because if I truly don't believe I can help you, I'm not going to try to sell you anything. However, I've been in this industry for, I've been an entrepreneur, I like to say for 20 years, and I know a lot of good coaches. I know a lot of great coaches. I know a lot of great services. So if I can't help you, chances are. I'll have a referral or two. I will have, you know, something I'll tweak and I'll go, you know what? Um, I think this person might be a better fit for you. So of course, do I want clients? Of course, do I want to work with people? Yes, but I want to provide the best kind of service that I can. So it all starts with a conversation and I just invite people to go to Sober and Serene, the contact page or the services page, and you can choose how you want to contact me and you can make an appointment and it just takes you exactly to the service you want. And it all starts with conversation. 
It's one of those things where if you happen to be tuning into the show and you were just kind of driving around and, and you just kind of hit on the show and, and you've been intrigued by the content, there's a reason why that happened. Uh, it's because you're being led to that. And so it's, it really is important for you to follow through and to if, 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 if there is, if you have an addiction that is genuinely affecting your life in a negative way and affecting those around you, um, and you're willing to admit that to yourself, then call a coach, call some, call Sam and she can, she can help you through that. So it's, um, I want to thank you for being here. It's been, it's been a, a great hour. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Kevin, for having me. I, like I said, I love the idea of positive talk radio, and I'm so glad I could be part of this conversation today. Me too. I love positive talk radio. As a matter of fact, we've talked about conversations a couple of times. I'm now doing on positive talk radio.net. I'm taking some of my old shows from 2003, like Neil Donald Walsh and uh, Gary Zukoff and others, and I'm repackaging them and putting them up because the information is so good and is so timeless. So go to positive talk radio.net and you'll find out all about that. But I want to thank you so much for being here. Also go to sober and serene.com and you'll find out everything you need. And by the way, be kind to one another because each other's all we've got. We'll see you Monday at 9 a.m. Have a great day, everybody.